This is our second session on Philippians 2, 25 to 30. And what we're going to do in this session is simply try to understand why Paul thought it necessary to send Epaphroditus back to the Philippians, or, as it says here in verse 28, why he is eager to send him back. So, necessity and eagerness. And there are at least, what, four or five reasons that he gives, and I think they are tremendously helpful to meditate on why we would consider anything particularly necessary or be eager to do it, something that's not commanded in the Bible. Like the Bible doesn't say, send Epaphroditus back to the Philippians on such and such a date. And most of the decisions we have to make in life are made like that. We don't have an explicit command in the Bible. So how did Paul go about making such a decision? Let's see how he does it. Father, as we look at Paul's reasoning for why something is necessary and why he's eager to do it, would you grant that we would discern how we would make such decisions as well that glorify Christ and, and bless people? I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. This paragraph, let's read it again, is about Epaphroditus and his ministry to Paul and Paul's sending him back to the Philippians. I have thought it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother, fellow worker, fellow soldier, your messenger and minister to my need. In other words, it wasn't easy to let him go. He's a, he's a brother. He's a colleague. He's a comrade in arms. He's a need meter. And he's going to let him go. So that's what's at stake here. Why, why is it necessary to let him go? For he has been longing for you all and has been distressed because you heard that he was ill. Indeed, he was ill, near to death. But God had mercy on him, not only on him, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. I am the more eager to send him to you, therefore, that you may rejoice at seeing him again, and that I may be less anxious. So... Receive him in the Lord with all joy and honor such men, for he nearly died for the work of Christ, risking his life to complete what was lacking in your service to me. Let me just point out something in uh, chapter 4, verse 18, where Paul says, I have received full payment and more. I am well supplied, having received from Epaphroditus the gifts that you sent, a very good offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. So I just point that out so you can see the context of what he means back here where he says, I have thought it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, minister to my need. They sent maybe money, clothing, food, books that Paul needed. And so that's the situation. Now he's He's sending him back after he had risked his life and after he had become uh, very, very ill, even to the point of death. So what are the reasons given in this text for why Paul thought it necessary and why he is so eager to send him? First, because... He has been longing for you all. So that's reason number one that Paul takes into consideration when he considers the necessity of sending him back. His own longing for the Philippians. He's one of them. He's longing for them. Second, and he has been distressed because you heard that he was ill. So not only... Is he longing for the Philippians? He's been distressed. Now, I want to linger over this for just a second. You know, we're so selfish in the way we think about our own sickness. We generally want people to know that we're sick and to feel sorry for us and to be attentive to us and help us. What What's so wonderful and strange about Epaphroditus is that he was distressed, 
Not that he was sick, but that they heard he was sick. Now, the reason that's important is because I, I've said before that both Timothy in verses 19 to 24 of this chapter and Epaphroditus are examples of what Paul is really trying to get across earlier. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but to the interests of others. And I think the reason Epaphroditus is talked about the way he is here in this paragraph is because this right here especially illustrates that truth. He is distressed because they heard that he was ill. And that becomes now a second reason why Paul thought it so necessary and why he's so eager to send him back. Now, here's a third one. This word, therefore, here refers back to what he's just said. I am the more eager to send him, therefore. Wherefore? Well, that's the reason. Now, what's the reason then? God had mercy on him, and not only on him, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore, I'm eager to send him back. Now, you have to think about that. How does that work? How does that argument work? What is it about God's having mercy on Epaphroditus and raising him up from his sickness so that he doesn't die, and Paul experiencing that mercy on himself, lest he should have sorrow upon sorrow? How does that become an argument to send him back? Well, here's my attempt to explain it. God's mercy spared Epaphroditus for the sake of Paul. And Paul, therefore, feels eager to spare Epaphroditus for the Philippians. You see how that works? God had mercy, and he didn't let me go walk through the, the added sorrow of the death of my friend and your minister. So if God had mercy on me, by showing me that kind of kindness, should I then keep him because he's my brother and my fellow soldier and minister to my need? No, no. I'm going to show mercy to you by sharing him with you. And so this is God's mercy being extended through Paul back to the Philippians, which is just another beautiful illustration of this teaching in chapter 2, let each of you look not only to his own interests, how easy it would have been for Paul to keep Epaphroditus, but to the interests of others, because that's the way Paul was treated. And now here comes argument number four. I am eager to send him that you may rejoice at seeing him again. So the joy of the Philippians he takes into account. They love this man. They sent him for Paul's need, but now they would love to have him back. And so that's number three. And this is number four. And now number five. And that I may be less anxious. That's argument number five or reason number five, why it is so necessary and why he's so eager to send him back. My anxiety, my, literally, my sorrows will be less. Let's see if we can now sum it up. So why is it so necessary in Paul's mind? I thought it, I reasoned it out. This is what you have to do to make decisions. You can't just look in the Bible and say, oh, where's, their, where's their Bible verse when you should send somebody back? You have to think and decide when it's necessary, and, and then become eager in that necessity. So here the, here the, here's my summary of the arguments. The first argument would be love to Epaphroditus. His longing, or his 
joy. Right here. He's longing for you. And Paul considers uh, not acting just for his own sake. He's my brother. He's my fellow worker. He's my soldier. He meets my needs. I want to keep him. No, he takes Epaphroditus' longing into account. So that's number one, Epaphroditus' joy. Number two, this distress here that he feels for them is really a double argument, isn't it? Because if he's distressed that they heard that he was ill, then their hearing that um, he was ill must have caused them anxiety that he was worried about. And so Paul wants to send him back both for their relief and his relief. He, he wants him not to be distressed. So I'm going to call that love to Epaphroditus, even though it includes love to them as well, uh, relief of his distress. Number three, the extension of the mercy of God, God's mercy spread Paul wants to spread to others the mercy he's been shown. So God showed him mercy by not taking Epaphroditus away from him. And so he's going to share him with them as well. He loves to extend God's mercy to others. And number four, the joy of the Philippians. Or let's say love to the Philippians, their joy. is a factor in Paul's considering. And then lastly, isn't it remarkable that five, just like it says back here, let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. And what a beautiful thing it is when taking thought for others becomes a satisfaction of our own interest. That m- that I may be less sorrowful or less anxious as well. So uh, my comfort, my comfort and joy are met as I try to meet yours. Now, I think this is the kind of thinking that we should do with a text like this. And if we think this way and and, uh, get, this kind of reasoning into our hearts, then when we come to think through what is necessary for what I should do in my relationship with other people, what should I be eager to do in how I relate to those around me? Epaphroditus is longing. Paul wanted to satisfy it. Epaphroditus is distress. He wanted to relieve. God's mercy he wanted to spread the Philippians joy. He wanted to advance his own comfort. No doubt about it. He wanted to experience it. It's not wrong to want to be made happy by your effort to make others happy.